before we get into this episode, just want to give a shout out to all of those around the country and indeed around the world and in, in and outside the boxing family who may have an empty seat at the dinner table this year, who may have an empty seat on the sofa and who may have an empty pair of slippers under the stove or the fire. My thoughts and my love are very, very much with you all. And uh, if you can't be with that special somebody for whatever reason, don't be alone. Don't feel like there's no one around. There's, there's millions and millions. Reach out. Say hello. Yo, welcome on in. It's Christmas. Enswell Boxing. www.enswellboxingpodcast.com And the new Irish Boxing Podcast. 083-351-5250 Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email They're all there, you know what they're at It's my very, very festive pleasure To be in your ears for the next However, however, the foreseeable And I want to start by wishing you Yes, you, I'm looking at you Can you hear me? (laughs) Uh, Your family, your friends And all the listeners and all the boxers And all the trainers and everybody who's given me A minute, an hour any little bit of your time. It's made my year. And a massive happy Christmas to you all. And we're coming right to the end of what we call, some people like to call it, and they go counting episodes. I really don't even know how many episodes we've done. But we are coming to the end of season one. It's been an amazing, amazing season one. Amazing. Really has gathered momentum. And if I'm being honest, towards this back end of it, probably fizzling out a little bit. A little bit of a... Heading back into that end of the year, it's just been a little bit, it's one after another after another. Looking forward to picking now and getting drawn, writing, the, writing things up, getting things going again. Tyson Fury stuns the world again. Mick Conlon delivers composed, professional performance to forever take that name away from him and his and his record. Cuevi Nigiarco finishes a fantastic year by stopping his opponent and moving to 6 and 0. Oh, and teeing up a phenomenal 2020. Watch that space. And there was no joy for Cork's Nolly Murphy or Stevie Ward. They're down, but they're not out. What's coming in today's episode? We're going to look at the impending holiday season, see what's coming up for the podcast. We'll have a look at the Irish boxing landscape and see what's been happening, as I said, around the last few days and weeks. My guest on this episode, two tremendous fighters and characters. Newly crowned 64 kg elite Irish champion Evelyn Nigaro. You do not want to miss this lady. And a fella who I've been very pleased, privileged, and delighted to become my mate over the last 12 or so months. Limerick light middleweight, real character, real lovable rogue, Graham McCormack. Just a touch of what was saying there. Last few weeks, been a little bit topsy turvy. We've had tremendous boxing coverage, unbelievable fights. We've had the Rowdy and Saudi. We've had the MSG cards. We've had unbelievable action. Top quality fights. Not all Irish, but massive Irish fights as well. All across the board. It's been just a phenomenal fourth quarter for the boxing calendar. And I'm almost, as we come to the end of the year, we'll have two, at least two more episodes. But they're in the can. The interviews and all are done. I'll get to that. I'm looking forward to just maybe one or two days of getting the feet up and trying, trying to get fat as much as I can. I've hoped to do that for the last few years. It doesn't happen for some reason. Just can't put on the blubber. But I like trying. I like trying. We'll have snowballs. We'll have tea cakes. We'll have Pringles. We'll have cans of Coke, cans of fizzy orange. We'll have all of that. And we'll have the feet in front of the fire. Even if it's only for a day, it'll feel like it. It'll feel like it. And then the pencil will have to come out because I write a pencil all the time little insider insider insight um, but I am looking forward to a couple of days of just doing a little bit of a little bit of nothing I suppose and, and and it has to be done I suppose for everybody who's on the grind who's on the it's been a busy busy year for everybody and it's been a hustle for everybody and it's been tough at times but it's been for the most part unbelievably positive and as again I want to highlight and say thank you to you 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 see you there yeah 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 you look I'm looking at you I can see you uh, yeah, amazing. And just want to thank everybody who's given me their time, their advice and passing on the knowledge that I need to build this first year's platform a steady foundation. And I think it's safe to say we're on a good footing now heading into this new year where there's some really exciting things coming down the track. Will I tell you what they are? Do I ever? 
yeah I do I do I do I do sometimes and I shouldn't but I will I will in a few minutes <laughs> there's a brilliant interview from a truly inspiring man coming over to Christmas a former champion Billy Schwer of course of Kilcullen Connections uh, gave me an hour or more of his time a few weeks ago and it was a phenomenal chat I had with him just really insightful on how a fighter goes from being on top of the world to being bottom of the world to being back on top again and everything it takes in between and how it's done and his book called Man Up has been a brilliant brilliant read and what I hope to do is maybe do a little bit of a deep dive and maybe sue some quotes read a little bit of it and then go to the interview of it as well there'll be a second part of our Heels Off Gloves On uh, series which got a little bit delayed of course that's with the world famous the pioneer and the absolute beautiful lady herself Jane Couch and I'm working for a little few more surprises that will come over the coming days and weeks so watch that space you never know what will come up with we just keep an eye on www.endswellboxingpodcast.com and if I can ask if I can and I don't and you don't mind when you have a little bit more time over the holiday would you mind getting over to iTunes maybe give us an hour review give us a rating and uh, if you love it say so and if you don't love it say nothing at all First guest today is a young lady who's boxed with the Clonnefa Club in Dundalk since she first pulled on a pair of gloves. Seems a long time ago now, but it's not really. It's not really when you put it into context of life and everything else. She's boxed internationally. She's boxed at the highest level. She's represented and she's won at the highest level internationally. She's won 13 Irish titles along the way in an underage career that is absolutely trophy and title laden. But 2019 was the first year she stepped up to compete at Irish senior elite level. It made a little difference. It made a little difference as she added title number 14 to become, at her first time of asking, the 64 kg Irish elite champion. I'm speaking, of course, of a beautiful, talented, skillful, intelligent, and phenomenal boxing talented Evelyn Igaro. From the start of the year, was it was the seniors always in in mind? Yeah, the senior. Yeah, like I, I was thinking of how I did in the under 18s and then like we'll go from there. But then I was like, my coach was just like, "Oh, just enter these." But I was a bit young entering, but I wanted out. So. And what better way to announce yourself into the senior setup yeah. as uh, just to go bang? <laughs> here I am. Like, yeah. there's no such thing as easing your way in. And brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. Going into any fight, there's going to be that the concerns and ticking the boxes as they go. And but did you find any massive difference when you stepped up? But like yeah, I'm still getting used to it. Like three minutes, like and like I've been boxing for it maybe like a year now, but I've only had a few fights at three minutes. But I'm still getting used to it. Like yeah, so I know I thought it was just different. Like going into the elite because like they have like smoke and everything, and then for all the like other competitions like the under 18, like they wouldn't have any of that. Like not that much people would be there. Yeah, that's a big deal, and it's and for for Ireland, it's a little bit out there as well. We like to do things a little bit bog standard and plain, and then and then yeah. all of a sudden you get the the music and the lights, and and sometimes yeah. they even go for a fucking smoke machine. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was standing in front of it before my fight, and I'm pretty sure I choked before when it. <laughs> oh wow! Well, I, I get to that one in a minute, but um, I didn't box like I don't know. I was kind of disappointed on in the way I boxed, but like I was happy to have won the fight. Are you kidding but, me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like I was oh, happy, like I was, I was like, I was like I was a, disappointed like with the way I boxed because like I like I don't know I just don't box like that but she was the long boxer and I obviously have to like keep going forward with her. Wow. So I literally wow. have to change. You're, like, you're, you're um. So it's safe to say <laughs> you are your own biggest critic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to remind you of what he said afterwards and you can tell me, right? He said, yeah. Word, words can't describe how I felt when the decision was read out and how proud I am of what she achieved. She, she's she been with the club since a young girl, watching her grow from a shy, quiet girl to a confident young woman and winning the Irish Elite title only turned 18 in July. Not bad praise from coaches who don't like to give much yeah. away, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. I think so, that was the only one I got this year. <laughs> and you're boxing out with Dundalk, is that right? Yeah, can't miss a tree in the hometown. Oh, for Jesus' sake, Alan. Brush up, man. Brush up. Looking forward. There's a little thing on the horizon next year. Is that a possibility? The Olympics? I don't think that's a possibility because 64 isn't Olympic weight. And we've Kelly 
at 60. Yeah. And, um, and, and Amy is... Um, trying to get a 60. Ambitions are to box at the Olympics at 60. You're realistic enough about it. You've got time on your side. Yeah. So what... Like hopefully 2024, I'd like say, add new there's no, weight. There's no hopefully about it. 2024 is mm. your year, isn't it? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, with, with no immediate start back in January, I guess, with the... Normally you'd be talking about youth championships then and stuff like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. So does this mean... Uh, now, dare I say that word in boxing that not many use is, is rest do you get a little bit of rest now uh, no I'm still training <laughs> but like I have exams oh. but I didn't even get rest after the leaf like uh, literally the next day I had to fly out to England to box oh that's then, right yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, and then I have exams now so okay and how's that going for you how's the balance like it's really hard but the, the college is doing enough to like support me Um, I'm on scholarship there so well, like, likely so yeah Uh. So, like, I train with the high performance team up in Abbottstown, so I stay there, like, maybe four days a week. You took this week off for exams because I have loads of exams. Yeah, you're in good company out there now. They're, they're, the, yeah. they're just uh, <laughs> all joking aside and take the Europeans aside. Um, how, how does it feel when you look back now, or I suppose you won't get a chance till Christmas, or feet are up, selection box is open, telly is on, fire's mm-hmm. lighting, a little bit of a rest, maybe for an hour somewhere along the line. <laughs> Yeah, maybe an hour like It's something I learned the hard way of a long time of, of constantly driving forward. Driving, okay, we've done that. Next one, next one, next thing, next thing. And not yeah. really taking a chance to, to absorb it and enjoy it. it. It must be very satisfying for you. Would you be able to use it to drive yourself next year to, to do the same again, if not better? Yeah, like, like as I said, like I, do, I, do, I didn't perform like the way I could have. So like, obviously, like I'll train harder. And then push myself to perform the way I know I can. I wanted to talk a little bit about your style. Have you had anybody uh, say you, your style is very like this fella or that person or that girl? Or... Oh, no, no. Right, well, well, here's what I thought, right? And here's the notes I made, right? So she's tall, athletic, long frame, upright. You box very big. Safe to say long levers. That's just, that's... And you're yeah, able to generate yeah. pretty, pretty unique power with those arms from... You don't need to be big looping shots. You love that little... Um, Setting them up with the jab and then right hand. Yeah, or the backhand. Mm. And, the, and then the stance, I suppose you, you like to... Feel, you can switch it a little bit. I love the cheeky low hands at times as well. I just think that's... <laughs> it's probably a coach's nightmare. <laughs> to me, Evelyn, putting all that together, it reminds me so much of Thomas Hearns. Wait, I, Tommy who? Tommy Hearns. Have you ever heard of him? Have you ever watched him? He's a Hall of Fame middleweight. He boxed at the same time as Roberto Duran. Probably the golden era for middleweight boxing. He yeah. had that same right hand. He had almost identical style. Almost <laughs> so big, so strong, long arms. Marvin Hagler was was the famous one he was involved with, with that two-round or yeah. three-round war. It was just amazing. Your style, you wouldn't be meeting too many opponents the same as yourself. Certainly not Yeah, Ireland. no. Uh, I'm pretty sure I only met like a few. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first one... I got was from Russia. I think it was my first European, but I got her. She was a wee bit taller than me. So that was really weird because I never bought a girl that was as tall as me. But I ended up beating her on a split decision. So domestically, safe to say you're not going to meet somebody that, with those attributes, are you? <laughs> no. Like, I'm really tall, so. And would you, at any point, like, how much of an influence would the likes of Kelly and Amy and those, the older the older girls, would they would they have been able to help you out and give you tips and pointers? Oh, yeah, like, I train them there in Abbotstown, so, like, it's literally full-time, but Kelly is really nice, and I do get along with her, and, like, she does give me advice, and um, she said that I've done really well. She's a legend, really, and I don't use that yeah, word. I don't. I, I I rarely use that word, and it's it's a word that's tossed about here in Ireland. He's a legend. Listen, he's a legend. There, but like he's I, probably the nicest like person I've met. Like really, like genuine. Yeah, really does. Like she she has helped me. Like I used to spar whenever I was younger too, and she'd always like have like something positive to say about me. How much of an impact would that have on you, Evelyn? When when someone someone one of your peers, somebody who is I suppose top of her game, and and probably one of our favourites for medals. How much would that resonate with you then when you hear it or when she says it to you to take the time? Like, actually, like, I don't even know how to say this, but, like, like it affects me positively. Like, yeah. like I know she's, like, up with, like, one of them and it's just, like, it is, like, it's good to be hearing that she, like, thinks that I'm, oh, I'm a great boxer and, like, I could, like, go all the way. So. Yeah, so it's, it's um yeah, and it proves as well that it, it, it's, yeah. it doesn't take much for these established stars let's call them because that's what they are or champions or 
as Katie did before mm. at the same, pretty much around the same level as well. So yeah. I noticed as well, your balance is incredible. Again, here comes the geek. Okay, When I'm watching her and analyzing a fighter, a fighter, I look at the feet as sweet science. It's, it's about the feet really, isn't it? If you can get yourself yeah. in and out. Is that something you've worked on? Or I just say about Tyson Fury, he moves like a middleweight. He shouldn't move yeah. the way he moves for the size. Of, I wouldn't say it as bluntly, but a girl your size moves frighteningly quick. Is that something you've worked on? Well, I kind of did and I kind of didn't because whenever I started box, all I do is like run in. <laughs> like I, I'd always move around anyways. And then after a while, like I started like meeting like small boxers that would run, run in on me. So like I'd have to learn how to move. The time, like there's times there you're spinning off and you're spinning out onto the back. And I'm like, hold on a minute. <laughs> How is she doing that? Like, you know, and, and <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> so there's, you see, and there's what I was trying to get to. A lot of it is Let's be honest about it. There, there is an element of natural talent as well that that, that comes, yeah. and then you got to work on the areas that aren't so natural, I suppose, and and that's yeah. that's the horrible part for everybody. But I I just look no because I notice at times almost all your weight is on your front foot at times, but then in the blink of an eye it's it's just gone. You've turned your hips and you're gone, and it's like, hang on a minute, how is just it's <laughs> it's listen, it's a credit to you and 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 to your team and your coaches and everything else. It's it's it's. It's very special to see an Irish fighter with those attributes. When you say the extra minute in the rounds, is that, I guess, just more miles? Yeah. Like, I, like I'm not really used to three minutes. So, like, I haven't boxed and, like, I've moved up to, like, senior boxing and new boxing. And, uh, I just don't do three minutes. I usually, like, stop my phone. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, like, the second minute. But, I know, like, I'm still getting used to the three trees. So, like, I think that's something to work on. And, and... Again, part of the game as well as when, when you're when you're in those early minutes the, 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 of the rounds, are you reading? You're watching your time in your opponent. You're reading, or you're watching what's coming. Well, yeah, but like the first thirty seconds, like I wait for them. Like I just see how like the box and how to move, and like if I know when to hit or like when they're gonna. Go on, so fin- finish. Don't be don't be uh, bashful now. Finish what you were gonna say. Thirty seconds. You, would you have a fight read pretty much? First minute, I would like re- try and read my opponent. So if I can't move or like. I try and figure out how the box. Does so that make sense? So yeah. Oh no. So you'll faint or you'll twitch or you'll just see what way she'll react. Yeah. And then boom, <laughs> <laughs> overcomes <laughs> the sledgehammer and that's it. Lights out. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. Well, look, we're not giving away anything because I suppose if yeah, <laughs> do something about it. Isn't that the message? <laughs> yeah. It's it's a work in progress. At eighteen years of age, fourteen now and well, at least he's fourteen. Yeah, and we're not even half. We're not even a, a quarter of the way through it. Evelyn, it's not every teenage girl decides I'm going to be a boxer. Where did you get the bug? My dad actually wanted me to do um, sports because he didn't like me sitting around the house. And then he wanted me to do football. And I was just like, no, that's a boy's sport. And then he was like, right, okay, we're well, going to put you in box. And I was like, <laughs> well, that's more like boys than like football. Shout and out then, to you, dad. Yeah. Shout <laughs> out to you. Props to you. What, what's the name? Fulbright. Shout out to you, sir. Absolute genius move. There was boxers in my street. And then like they were sparring outside and then we seen them and then. Like, they give us the name of the club. They trained in, so then we went down, and then we just started. Like, I, I came down with my brother and my sister. And are the brother and sister boxing still? Uh, the older brother is the sister. Brilliant, talented family. Yeah. How would your friends have found it, and how do, how do they take to it? Well, like, I go and say they hate boxing, but, like, like, I don't really hang out with them much because I'm always training all the time, and they kind of, like, understand that. So it's very, yeah. like, they are supportive of it, like, The yeah. boxer's life, yeah. There it is. Yeah. There it is, people. That anyone that's not aware of it, it's not. And <laughs> I keep saying this, this is far more, when we get to this level, we're not, we're dealing with yeah. more than picking up the bag once or twice a week. The bag is always at the door or in the car. Yeah. How has the study balance been? Because the world and its dog knows that any years of, of college and everything else are tough. So you're balancing as yeah, an elite really athlete. Are. Well, like, I still have to do the work, but, um, like, I train then, uh, like, they do help us then, Abbott's Town, and uh, even with the time they give us, like, in between training sessions, I still do my work down there. They have, like, places we can study. They have, like, laptops down there, too. There's mm-hmm. nutritionists, so if I have an exam on nutrition, like, they could help me out, too. Oh, well, that's the way. That, listen, I keep saying this, to the, even to the younger ones, I keep saying, listen, teachers, give them a break. Be that teacher in <laughs> 10 years' time that says, yeah. when she comes home with the medals around her neck or she's the belt over her head, I used to teach her and I used to let her off. <laughs> be yeah, that be teacher. That now. <laughs> Be that teacher. Don't be the other one where she's saying, if, if I got her now, I'd knock her out. She never gave me a break. <laughs> yeah, like, there was, I think there was one teacher I had. Um, oh, I went away. Like, I was in uh, Italy, but, like, he was trying to get, like, 
like my friends to get in contact with me and be like, oh, she has to do uh, this essay by whatever time. And he came back with a silver and he was just like, all right, okay, well done. Make sure you finish that message. <laughs> oh, man, seriously, get, get better. <laughs> just don't get bitter, yeah. get better. I won't keep you much longer, Evelyn. I wanted to check, who, have you got a favourite fighter at the moment? Is there someone that you like to watch? No, I actually don't even really watch boxing. Really? Yeah, like, I don't think I actually... Well, I didn't even watch the Anthony Joshua fight with Ruiz, but... but um, and uh, what about venues or places, tournaments you've been to? Is there one that stands out that you say, yeah, that was amazing, I'd love to go back there, or I would never want to go there. Is there is there anywhere that's... I went to Italy last year um, oh. for the European. Oh, cool. <laughs> I think it's called Abruzzo del Gear, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, like it was a really nice place. Deadly. The weather was lovely too, and yeah... I'd love to go back. Has there been any camps or places that you would say uh, it wouldn't bother you if you didn't get back there? No, not really. Like they have Wi-Fi everywhere, so it's great. Clever <laughs> answer. That, you know what? That's yeah. you know what? I'd ask that question. I thought maybe she shouldn't answer. That's a tight move. Well yeah. done. <laughs> um, yeah. Have you any ambitions to go professional? Does it interest you at any point, or is it is it just too far down the line? Well, I don't think like I have been asked that before. Um, I think maybe after twenty twenty four because I do want to go to the Olympics and. Yeah. I say going pro now, I'd be too like too young. Oh no, I don't mean now, but I mean I suppose long term. Yeah. And and that's one thing I know as well from experience. It's it's boxers don't do long term yeah. too much because it's very much a, a daily plan and a weekly plan. But it yeah. is it, it would be something that would be in your your horizon at some point. You would think. Yeah. More luck to you, and more power to you, because it's um. It's very special to see an Irish fighter with with some with the attributes and the skills and the style. I suppose. The last thing I wanted to say: to you, Have you always lived? You've grown up in Dundalk. Uh, yeah. Like since I was like I was born in Drogheda, at like Drogheda Hospital, and then like I've always lived here. So mum and dad moved from England to Monaghan, and then Monaghan to Dundalk, and then they're from Nigeria. The ambition next year then is to defend your senior title. The under twenty two, I have in July or June, I think. Okay, yeah. Even after an, um, the impressive year that you've had, Evelyn, how much of a big deal would the Europeans this year teach? Get back on nothing this year. The burning desire now is to get back on the podium there. Yeah. At the top of it. Yeah. And and all leading up to 2024. Yeah. That's not a bad plan to have. You'll be qualified out of college by then. You'll be have all the time in the world yeah. to train. <laughs> how about the sponsors? Do you want to give anyone a shout out or the, the team and the coaches and everybody else? It doesn't happen by accident, does it? Yeah, like my coaches have done a lot for me, like even training me, spending their time on me, like even in the summers, I go down. Like I train twice a day. Like they're just unbelievable. Um, I don't. I don't actually have sponsors. <laughs> right. Yeah. Listen up, Dundalk people. Listen up, Ireland. <laughs> We've got one of our most unique styles. Get on this. Get this sorted out. Right. This girl is absolutely destined for the stars. So get it together. Get in touch. Get her. Get their people to talk to your people, or whatever way you want to phrase it. But anyone that can do anything to help. Let's get Please. after it because the smallest little thing, we, we were trying to help Neve Fair with a bonbon sponsor, but we're going to try and help yeah. you with something yeah, as well. Really, yeah. uh, we went to England, me and Neve Fair, and uh, she had bonbons anyway. She's like, do you want one? Like, it's been lovely to chat with you, Evelyn. Thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. I wish you the very best. For, have, a, have a beautiful Christmas. Have a lovely Christmas. Try and have a little rest, will you? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that. I don't think my coach would like that, so... As always, people, I would ask you to help in whatever way possible uh, Tree of Hope. Who are Tree of Hope? Tree of Hope are a little small charity, if you want, uh, who provide a symbol of support to all of us and all of those who are sadly affected or suffered suicide or are living with mental health issues. And uh, we all know somebody. Everybody knows somebody. We all do, sadly. Um, It's an epidemic. It's, uh, it was threatening to get out of control, but thanks to Noreen and like-minded people, they are um, battling back, battling back, and they need help, and they need support. And I'm asking everybody, anybody, to get in touch with Noreen. The show notes at the bottom of every episode that we've produced so far, Tree of Hope. They donate all that's needed for these little uh, symbols. Uh, they supply a tree, they supply the stake, and the plaque. All you got to do is get in touch. They do the rest. You find a green or a public area, you get permission from your local authority, or your club, school, college, workplace, wherever, and you get in touch with the person there, and uh, Noreen will supply the rest. That's all you have to do. If you want to do a fundraiser, if you want to help somebody, please do that also. But don't forget, no matter what, if you can, Tree of Hope today. Look, the next 10 days or so, 
going to be filled with colour. Joy, happiness, sleep, no sleep, food, food, more food. And that's important. It is important. It's very, very important to enjoy all that is and has been of the last 12 months. And indeed, it slipped my notice over the last while that it's a new decade. A new decade. And uh, not to state the obvious, but that only comes around once every 10 years, you know. So um, for me, it's going to be a case of sitting down and finishing writing the goals and have a look back. Where was the last 10 years? What's happened? Where have they gone? How it's been? And um, how have we managed? How have we all managed? Everybody has their own way of doing it. I don't make New Year's resolutions. I don't make short term. I, I just try to. But certainly the last 12 to 18 months for me has been a just total revolution. Evolution for want of a better word. And it's it's very important for us to enjoy and love and be loved over this holiday period. And uh, for me, as I said to Graham there not so long ago today, earlier on today, uh, it's important for me to keep a balance as best I can. Not let those highs get too high and not let the lows get too low. It's not always easy, but I do find that's what works for me. So each to their own, everybody has their own way. But as I said, with the curtain about to fall on this year and the decade, for me, I've looked back over the last few days, I've been drawing up some goals, seeing where I've come from. And in general, what people in the in the industry and in the creative and in boxing in general, they'll they'll be very, very honest on a daily basis with their diaries, with their with their uh, reviews and speaking with their trainers and their their important ones in their career. It's it's important to see, I suppose, the little questions, where have we come from? Uh where have we moved? Have we progressed? Have we moved along? Have we fallen down in any areas? Uh if have, what have we learned? Have we learned? And how are our relationships? If you're career driven, how is your relationship with your coach, with your manager, with your promoter? If you're in administration, if you're in office work, with whatever it is you're in, in the case may be, if you're in sales, how are your relationships with your peers, with your colleagues? And uh, it's it's what changes do I need to make? It's not easy to make changes. Am I able to make changes or what do I have to do to make the changes? It's important, I guess, most important, and this is one where I was really, really lacking in. How is my relationship with myself? And how the hell am I? How the hell am I? Am I giving myself enough time? Am I spending time? Am I taking time away to just do whatever? Chill out. Do nothing. Do something. That's the probably the most important relationship you're going to have your self-talk. Work on your self-talk. It's not mad. It's not stupid. It's important. Because if there's enough people on this planet that are willing to tell you, you are stupid. You're worthless. You're rubbish. And you learn as you as every one of us learns as we go on a new venture, as we fight a new fight, as we take on a new challenge. The ones you expect and hope and wish and want to back you and support you, not always the ones that do it. Sometimes that's where you get the greatest resistance. Because people don't like change. People are afraid of change. So, think what you want, work it out however way you want, and just go for it. Really and truly go for it. Grab it, two hands, and go with all you've got for it. Graham, you'll hear from him in a few minutes, Graham changed his whole life around. He went from a life on a downward spiral to being a professional boxer who's now 5-0. and And if he'd have listened to what anybody had said, he wouldn't have done anything. Wouldn't have done any of it. He'd be done by now. He would never have started. Don't have a plan B. Admit to yourself, this is what I dream of. This is my little dream. It's me, mine. Go for it. And it will make you nervous. And ultimately, it'll make you terrified at times. Afraid of your absolute H1T. And it's something been new to me, apart from having dreams, because let's face it, most of us lads, come on girls, Anyone that's listening there now, us lads are dreamers, right? At the best of times, we're just a lot of us have very great dreams and very great ambitions. But um, to make your dreams real, they have to be big. They really have to be frightening at times. And I know some of the stuff you'd see here, if you were to see it written down on the board and written down in the little, the goals, you'd look and think, ah, come on, Al, come on, really? But I, I make it... The way I would liken it, it would be to an actor on the stage uh, who has to exaggerate, who are all often told and trained to exaggerate every gesture or emotion in order for the audience to see it. So if it's a little slight um, hand gesture or whatever, 
if you just barely do it as you would in everyday life in Civvy Street, no one's going to see it on the stage. It's going to get lost. Your dream has to be exaggerated for you to pursue it, for you to buy into it, believe it and drive it. You've got to dream big. But almost as important as those dreams are goals. And those dreams without goals are just dreams. When you dream big and your goals are in place, prepare to fail. You have to be ready. It's going to happen. Prepare to fail and fail as big as the dreams are and as big as the goals are. Prepare to fail. Prepare to lose. Prepare to fall down. Be hurt. Have your heart broken. Have people say and do and be mean and put you down and be prepared for all that. It's going to happen. Have times where you think, I can fucking do this, this is, what's the point? There's been a few times this year, you've heard it here. We've heard of so many champions here. How many times did Wayne McCullough tell us? Jerry Cooney, Michael Conlon, Jason Quigley, Andy Lee. We've heard it so many times. The young amateurs coming through now with their dreams are in, right now, their dreams are in perpetual motion as they prepare for Tokyo next year and they don't know what's going to happen. But every minute of every day is spent working towards Tokyo next year. And when you don't fail, you, you don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give up. You cannot fall back. You cannot let everything. You can't let it all fall out around your ears. Fall forward. So even when you're falling and something's going wrong, just just as you just as you're about to hit the ground, take that little movement forward to stop. So that you're a little bit farther forward than you were when you fell. Restock, dust yourself down, get up and go again. Don't be afraid to fail because when you want something that you've never ever had and you've never had it and you really, really want it, well then you're going to have to do something that you've never done, ever, ever. To get something you've never had, you're going to have to do stuff that you've never had to do. And that means falling, failing and hurting over and over again. Find that other way. Find that other angle. Find that better approach. Move and head towards that goal. And I don't want this to sound too um, preachy or altar-like. A blessed art thou and all that. I don't want it to be like that. But I heard a little story recently that resonated very, very much with me, and it was a scenario where um, people uh, about people, ambitions, and dreams. And it was a a scenario and an image and a a metaphor, if you like, of a guy on his deathbed. And gathered all around his bed were ghosts. And these ghosts of, what were they? The ghosts of his unfulfilled potential. Now think about that for a second. So you're lying in your bed, you're about to tip on, you're about to calve up, you're about to move on into that next realm, whatever, wherever, however it may be. And around the bed then is a load of ghosts of potential and ideas that you never acted on and the, and the ghost of talents that you just did not use that you had talents that you were given talents that you've probably had all your life that you didn't know you had and they're all standing around the bed they're annoyed they're disappointed they're upset and they're saying to you we came to you we came to you because we We wanted you to bring us to life. We wanted you to make us real. We wanted you to take us as an idea, a concept, a dream and bring us to life. But now we have to go with you into the grave. And the the whole crux of this is is the bit that got me. And and I really hope this doesn't come across as being preachy. Ask yourself right now, as the year turns, as you're sitting down for a couple of hours over the Christmas at some point in time to write down what you want. How many ghosts are going to be around your bed when the end comes? It's powerful. It's hard hitting. But it was real. And it was real for me. Because I don't know how many ideas I've had. I've got... Oh, look, you don't want to know. You really do not want to know how many ideas. Many, many, many. Sometimes I have a pen and pencil beside the bed. Pen and paper beside the bed. So when I wake up at night with these crazy, mad ideas, dreams... Write them down, scribble them down. Shout out to Paul Mort. Uh, that was an idea he came up with, probably heard of and passed it on. But a uh, great, great life coach and uh, inspirational figure in based over there in Sunderland. 
and he it was an idea I picked up from listening to some of his stuff over the years but yeah scribble them down as you wake up because sometimes you have a dream about something a story or a line or a narrative or something like that but don't give up on your dream because I know from experience my dreams were dead, buried, gone, forgotten completely and were it not for some fortuitous and I have a story of my own life a very, very um, change of direction shall we say very massive change of direction this time of the year four years ago and I'm going to get into that in the next episode it was uh, that coupled with a conversation with my brilliant brilliant friend Toby Dean across there in Lasagna and Bagua Tattoo that allowed me to rekindle my dreams and believe now again that these dreams are very much still alive so if you don't have one find it and find what it is and start living it because it will absolutely turn your world upside down. The next bio coming up here now, he won't mind me saying. Um, what is there to say about him? What is there to say about the G train? One of Limerick's finest, a true son of Limerick, a fella who wears his heart on his sleeve, a fella who was on one point on a career trajectory, a path, a life path that there was no end, there was no future in. And he was the first man to tell me that the first night I spoke to him. A fella who I heard on another podcast many, almost 14 months ago now. And for some reason then that podcast had said to me, and I'm not a spiritual person, well I wasn't at the time, I need to speak to him. And I did. And the rest is his, as they say, is history. Graham McCormack is now 5-0. and all. He's at least one fight away from a BUI or a Celtic title. He's one of my really good friends. He's someone I've got to know really well over the last, as I said, 12 months or more. And I always, always look forward to chatting with him, speaking with him, learning from him, sharing notes with him. So, here's Graham. You're 5 and 0 now, 2019. Being a mix of a sort of year, you had Jade Crean and you had Rain Totteroff who came in and straight out of WWE, I think. And uh, <laughs> he was he was keen to put a stop to the G-Trend, but that didn't happen. Yeah, look, two, two fights in the year. And of course, I would have liked to have more. But look, there was no one no one at all for that. Just boxing now isn't, isn't uh, <clears throat> going great at the minute. But look, I took a good fight. Jay Kareem gave me a, gave me a great fight. Max really enjoyed that fight. Came came to win, you know. As all, all my opponents have done, have come to win. And Brian Tadarov in um, July, that was... Um, Another tough fight, man. <laughs> came to, like you said, came to take my head off, you know. Um, I weathered the storm and, and came on strong, you know. I enjoyed the fight, man. You know, I enjoyed <clears throat> I enjoyed coming out of the year now, still undefeated, uh, five and all, and um, looking forward to uh, what's coming, man. You know. Yeah, and a big shout out to Jade there. One of one of I can safely say one of the nicest guys in boxing. Yeah. And no yeah, no matter right. what anybody yeah. says, he's without a shadow of a doubt he has been. And that was a fight that I I can't believe that was last March. Jesus Christ! It yeah, seems man. it was. That was a good, you know what, man. Jade, like, I'll be honest, like, I took Jed for granted. I didn't think he'd come to win. I didn't think he'd come, I didn't think he'd come with such intentions. Like, he, he, he knew beat me was, was, would put him back in, in, in the mix kind of thing of the Irish, of the Irish, uh, like, middleweight. You know what I mean? And, and fuck it, he came, he came to win, man. And I really enjoyed that. I got the best out of him. You know what I mean? And, and, and I've not more respect for Jake Green, man. He's, a, he's an absolute gent. And same with Ryan Tadarov, man. I actually speak to Ryan regularly, man. He's another great guy. He came to win as well. You know what I mean? And, I like the fact that I've had that I've had tough opponents. I was only saying to somebody two days ago that um, you know, no disrespect to anyone. Like without without opponents from in the away corner, man, there would be no boxing because we wouldn't be able to um, to build to, to get better and, and and to work on our on our craft, you know. So like I have I have massive respect for any any journeyman or, or away corner opponents. But some guys come to win and some guys come to talk up and just get paid. And every guy I've had has come to win, man. You know, and I suppose that that sounds to myself being easy to hit. You know what I mean? And, I, you know, I, I've no problem with my hands up saying it, like, but I, it will stand to me in the future, man, that I've had such tough fights, you know. Yeah, Graham, we've seen it so many times, and not, not, and let, let alone this year was the biggest. If it were ever, if ever boxing needed a reminder, we got it in in July when AJ went, literally just had to turn up and everything got thrown, turned on its head that night. So if anyone yeah. needed a reminder, and there's a lot of young people that are new to boxing, be it in the ring, out of the ring, and it's all. A lot of them are a little bit naive, a little bit green around the gills. That was the most stark reminder you're going to get that night that just keep your wits about you. And you're 100% right, you know. Of course, yeah, of course. Man. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, like people, people forget that about boxing, I think. You know, yeah. Anything, any, anything can happen. In, like, people, people, I think, are too, too uh, tied up on Floyd Mayweather, like, and going, oh my God, you know, I want to be like him and not get hit and, and you know, and and fucking win every, you know, and not take a loss in my whole career, like, and especially about, about you know, what I, what I, what I tried to say to some fighters, like, 
Boxing is a game where you have to be prepared to be hit. Like, yes, exactly. it's fantastic to be able to box and move away and not get hit, but it just doesn't happen. Like, you're going to get clipped at some stage. Like, the way I like no, to say it, Graham. Some don't... people don't, when, you, when they see you getting hit, they're like, oh, God, he's getting hit, man. Yeah, of course, can't go fucking swim without getting wet, like, you know? The way I like to say it is get hit and not get hurt. That's the key to it. If you can get yeah. hit, if you can deliver your shots at maximum and hurt and not get hurt when you're hit, yeah. well, that's the trick to it. You know, it, that... it helps that I have a big thick skull, man. There's many a fellas. There's many a hand has been broken on that skull, I'm sure, over the years, and you don't oh, need to answer that one. <laughs> um, but as we close out the year, we're heading into the to the to the family time. It's a good time of the year, but before we get to that, it's um, safe to say you're. A, maximum of a, of a fight really maximum two fights away from a BUI or a Celtic title fight that must be having come to it late realising the dream living the dream and working every minute you've got to, towards it how, how does that feel how do you How do you? yeah you know what man like when I, when I, when I like I've been out ring now for five months and there's a couple of things that have gone on and I suppose we'll talk about that in a minute like but when I look when I look at it now man right five and all it's not like it's not ten and all it's not I'm, I'm not where I'd like to be but I'm 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 extremely grateful for the position I'm in today. Like I mean, I only said this like I could have retired after my debut match, but the life I came from to to reach that itself was a, was an achievement, man. You know what I mean? And it just it's just been keep getting better and better for me. Like you know what I mean? I I I, I walk out at the gym. Yeah, it's no one that I'm wearing outside the camp, but I walk out. I get it off. I train very very hard. I'm the first in the gym. I'm the last one out of the gym. You know, I put it in all the time and. And to know that I'm in a position now where I'm where I'm five and all, and I'm ranked highly enough in the in the rankings and the Irish Southbound rankings, and you know I'm in a position. No, I'm in a I'm in a position to um to 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 be fighting for titles next year, man. You know, like I'll be honest with you, man. I'll be straight up honest about it. I I said and I have no problem saying it. I was close to retiring, man. Like not 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 fucking anything against anyone, man. But I was just kind of burnt out from. From the way Irish boxing has gone, and again, I will, I will, I will, I have no problem saying it's not anybody's fault. It's not why I left my managers. It's not their fault that the boxing isn't going great in Ireland. You know, it's just not a great time for boxing mm. in the south of Ireland. There. There's no shows being on, and you know, and it, it's tough for all the promoters and all the managers around the place at the minute. And <clears throat> so I was like, "Fuck! Is, is there a point? You know, I'm walking around teaching boxing and stuff, and and, and I've, a, I've, a, I've a baby on the way, and so you know, and things like that. Like, but." I, I didn't come this far, man, to just to just say, nah, you know what, I'm not going any further. I, I know I have a lot more to give to the boxing game. So, like, over the last couple of weeks, I, I, I've had a, I've had the, the thoughts in my head and I, I've sat down with a couple of people and I've made the decision now where I'm going to go on now for another 12 to 18 months and, and, and get get a title and get some big fights and, and then have a look at it again, you know. So, I, I'm very grateful that I'm in a good position. I've built up a good profile. I've had some good wins. I know, like... I haven't had any Irish, big Irish, well, as well as the Jade fight could be cut down as a domestic fight, but I'm looking forward to having domestic fights. Yeah. I'm not against any of the lads. I know myself and Reardon had a bit of a tit for tatting, but that was more in the in the papers. Anymore. But I will fight anybody, and there are some good lads around the country at my waist, loads of good lads around the country at my waist. So there's good fights out there to be made, and I'm looking forward to being in those fights that will be talked about three years on, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, and you bring, that brings it nicely around, Graham, to, um, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Most people that know you well and that are close enough to you, and, and I've been fortunate enough, I suppose, to get to know you, or unfortunate, whatever way you want to look at it over the last. <laughs> but, uh, no, absolutely. You know what it is? It's been, there's been a few people have uh, have kind of opened their arms, for want of a better word, from the time I dipped my toe into this and talk about learning and learning fast. And you were one of them, uh, of course, Padjo and Paul. And, and and them rush them uh, rogues shall we call them up there in in Dublin, and them um, a few in the north as yeah. well. But uh, anyone that's close to you knows that there has been a bit of restructuring going around, a little bit of rebuilding with the team, and you've touched on it there. So you're now um, you're in negotiations, supposed to to decide where your future lies and who it lies yeah. with. Yeah, look and, and and look, I will I will openly say that I've nothing against Leonard Gunnan or Stephen Sharp, and there was nothing, no animosity there. It was just a few things. Nothing. The lads didn't do anything wrong to me. I didn't do anything wrong to the lads. I just had to go on my own path. Again, you know, it, it brings me back to before I turned pro and I was in my amateur club in Corpus Christi, a great club. Got on with the trainers, but I had to go on my own path to 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 go where I wanted to go. And this is just another one of those times. You know, I, I fully believe that I'm in the position I'm in today because God has put me in this path, which I've said to him many a time before. I'm not a big preacher of God, but I fully believe that I'm in this position because God has given it to me. And it's just everything that comes to me, man, comes to me for a reason. So... So me leaving the lads, you know, it was nothing got to do with any of that, any of the lads or anything like that. It was just me knowing that to go, to go, it's time for me to go on a different journey now and to go down a different path. And I've been speaking to a couple of managers 
and and I have I have um, I have an idea of what's going on in 2020, and I'm I'm very excited about it, man, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and so say all of us, Graham, because it's safe to say on the circuit in Ireland, and you're you're 100 percent right. It and and. I, I, I'm one of the top of my wishes list here I'm looking up above me on the little whiteboard here is for 2020 the top is to get some domestic cards in the south because the talent pool that's here right now at the moment the little rivalries the little scene that has been built and with all credit to Box in Ireland and, and all take everybody has little fallouts and little fall-ins and little, that's that's part of a game that's, that is that is boxing and that's part of, of what goes into it so anyone that says there isn't or hasn't been over the years is is with all due respect, a liar. So that yeah. happens on a daily basis and it's going to continue happening. The big hope for the new year is that we see at least two cards in the south of Ireland. Nothing against yeah, the north great. because the cards up there are phenomenal. Look at the start of yeah, the year. Yeah, look, the lads, it's great to see such... But we really do need... I, I hanker, I really do hanker for yeah. the days of Andy Lee in UL. I hanker for those fights where Eddie yeah. and Oisin Fagan. and I hanker for those fights where, yeah. Jesus, how we say it again, Limerick, Willie Casey and Paulie, no, you know? Man. That we could bring. There's a lot of Limerick fighters now that we could bring. I saw it well. Look, I mean, you fucking you, Paddy Donovan there, man. He's absolutely shit. Had three and all, you know, two knockouts in ten by Andy Lee. You Lee Reeves there. He's five and all, four knockouts. He's over training in with the lads in Sheffield. You Siobhan O'Leary. I know, I know. She, she, we, she shouted me, going, "I'm not from Limerick, boy." She's very good. <laughs> she is a Limerick based fighter. She's one of our own. You know, she's yeah. there. You me, you know what I mean? There's, you know, there's, there's four of us there like that. We could definitely, definitely do a show in, in the Easily. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just at the time of doing it. Hopefully, man, hopefully we can get it. But I 100% agree with you, man. The, the talent in Ireland yeah. is absolutely phenomenal. And in North as well, if not to take away from that, all over it. But it will be absolutely fantastic to see, to see a few shows down south. No, I know, I know there's, there's incredible mad charges down south, man. I know that. You know, I was, Close enough to the lads, and I and I seen what it's like, man. It's you know it's fucking it's absolutely ridiculous, man. The the price that 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 you have to pay down here to run a show, like you know. So hopefully something can be sorted, man. You know, and and cause like you said, yeah, man. You know yourself, you're very close to the fire, no yeah. man. And because you're you're lucky enough, you know, you, you you get to talk to everyone, man. You know, and everyone finds you, and, and your 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 podcast doing really well, no man. Your show's doing really well, you know, and it's great to see, man. For a fellow like yourself, you know, you work very hard, and it's good to see, but. You know ourselves, man. This country is full of absolutely phenomenal oh, it's, talent. It's, it's probably just, Graham, unfortunately, it's kind of been sitting on the sidelines, you know. Yeah, at, I started, uh, and, and thanks absolutely for that. And you and the guy, every boxer that's given me a minute of their time has been a has. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. I'm not saying it is anything. As I said, I'm shout out to to Padjo Highland. He nailed it for me from day one. It's first year of a four year apprenticeship, but it's been an yeah. unbelievable for. But to get carried away, take feet off the ground, it is nothing without every minute those boxers and new boxers give me and to hear your stories told in your words to the people who mean the most ye mean the most to who are the people that you're with every day yeah. Irish people want to see their own people fighting and that's what we pray in the yeah, new year want, you know? yeah and absolutely and, and the end of an Olympic cycle now you're going to have even more coming off the conveyor belt there's just all we ask mm. for is the heads the powers that be because when there's a will nothing gets in the way nothing gets yeah, in the way and that's that's yeah. the name of the game right now you touched on it there unbelievable my favourite fighter of his generation of all one of all time and, and I'm not saying this for any because it's you, you you've heard me say many people are Andy Lee for everything for the way he carries yeah, himself yeah. in the ring a tough mofo in the ring almost didn't did yeah. went out on his shield carried himself with dignity every step of the yeah, way and man, now he's amazing, guiding man. the way for, amazing, for Paddy man. Yeah, and and he's and he's coaching you, I think, quick, you know, and, and, and you know what, man, the lads look absolutely phenomenal, like they you do. Know, and Andy, Andy, I suppose Andy, Andy, um, was top of the best coach in the world, man. And even even when Andy was an amateur, man, he held out in the club. I remember him putting a glove under my chin years ago, like when I was only start starting, I was about fourteen or fifteen. Like Andy's always been a really nice, down to earth, cool mm. guy, like you know. And it's you know, and he looks to be an absolutely phenomenal trainer, man. Paddy looks brilliant. Jason Quigley looked brilliant in his last fight, you know. Fair play to him, man. You know, it's fucking it's absolutely amazing. Like, because I know, I know, I know how much time it takes. You know, from being around Eddie and and now you know, Tyson Fury. Eddie, I know how much time it takes to train fighters, man. It's not easy, like you know. And Tyson Fury now too, by the looks of it as well. Yeah, so. I see that, man. Yeah, looks like looks like they're going to be teaming up for for Tyson next camp or something. That's that's cool, man. Isn't it? That's cool stuff. Like that's what boxing is. Like it's just a real cool game, man. Where people, you know, get connected. Like you know, through, through the through the sport, the greatest sport in the world is me. Like you know? yeah, we and it's a, it, it, look. Let's now you nailed it. It is our greatest. Ireland's right now. There is no other sport that is producing mm. fighters and sports people, not just sport at a regular rate who are performing on the world stage. Over. Listen, man, Luke Hilo, Luke Hilo is fighting for a world title in a couple of weeks. 
Yeah. Like, that's phenomenal. Man. I really, I really look up to that, to Luke Beeler, man. He, he, um, you know, he fought, he fought his way up, up the, up the ladder, man. You know, and, and I remember him saying to me one time in a message from after my third brother, something I take up chat to him. He said, listen, he said, walk hard in the small house and you'll get there. You know, and, and like, look at him now, like, he's fighting for a world title again. Yeah against Demis Andrade and a massive show like that's just phenomenal like that's what boxing does for people like Spike, Spike and Mungia Dennis Holden Spike and Mungia yeah. man I'm looking forward to that man hope Spike knocks his ass out <laughs> hope he plants him on his ass right in the middle of that ring I reckon, and there's... Spike, I reckon Spike could like Mungia might try and stand with Spike I reckon Spike could blow him out there man I hope he does I hope he does yeah, I hope he does, I hope he does. Well, I hope but he does, don't like it? And, and the same is that we've got the McKenna brothers, we've got Mick Conlon, we've got all these lads. It's yeah, man. Tyson Fury, say what you like about him. He there's Irish in there. He says it himself. The most prized possession is, last, is his Irish title. Last heavyweight Irish champion, so at last person to hold the heavyweight Irish title. Is he not? No, I you think he is. Could be right Are there you? now. And Big Alan Reynolds will be first one in to tell me whether he is or he isn't because he's a class act himself. I think, was the last one to I think you're right. right. So yeah, he Rogi. Held it at some stage he beat Rogi. Was the last one, but he definitely. Like people don't realize, like I'm more of a boxing fan than I am anything else. No, listen. I'm just lucky that I get to fight. Like I'm how more ma- a boxing fan than anything. How many times do I text you at stupid o'clock at night? Are you yeah, watching this letter? Or who did you ask me? Fan. Chad Dawson, you asked me about a couple of months ago, and I just happened to be chatting this week with John Scully, who trained Chad Dawson. So that's one yeah, for you. To... That's cool. Like. But we've got another big monster coming from. He's not Limerick either, but uh, he's coming from that direction as well. And Kevin Cronin, the Kingdom, you know. So I mean, Kevin, there's yeah, yeah, Kevin's doing well. Yeah, other lads up next year are doing well. Kevin and Dominic Donegan and yeah, with uh, uh, Dylan, Dylan. Dylan yeah, McDonough. You know, uh, that, 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 that seems to be good. Jim Toman draws on really well. The country is just is just is just filling up with talent, man. You know, filling up with great professional fighters, and just you know, it's 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 a really good time. It's just a shame that there isn't more shows on here, man. Well, you know? Graham, twelve months, ago, little over twelve months ago, when I dipped my toe into this, I started to say it there a minute ago. It was the same boat. It wasn't long after the Regency. Everything was literally dead. We had a bit yeah, of a yeah. resurgency. It's not dead right now. It's just at an impasse. I believe if yeah. the heads that are... Look, in, it'll come wrong, man. It'll it has to. Yeah, it has to. And we don't want to spend too much. But you, you rightly touched on a lady herself there. and she can. I don't think she'd ever deny it, but she, she is right in saying her home is Kerry. Siobhan, uh, uh, Siobhan, Siobhan O'Leary is on it. She's a Limerick lass. She's, she's a sister of yours in the boxing ah, family. She's, sister, yeah. she's, she's an she, absolute... Look, I tell you, she has some big notes to announce so man. looking forward to her announcing her big notes. Yeah. Um, she walks like she's uh, she's the most professional person I know, man, and that's 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 the total of John. Like she's just a fucking uh, an absolute professional. Like and one of the nicest people you could ever hope to meet as well. One of the nicest you could ever hope to meet. Yeah, and and I'm looking forward to her to her 2020, man. Looking forward to her next news. I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, she deserves it, man. You know, she walks fucking harder than anyone I know. You know, so yeah, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to um. To her announcing her news, and, and, and for anyone that's not, for anyone out there that's not, for anyone that's out there that's not in regular contact with with a fighter on a regular basis, be under no illusions that these people aren't fighting because they want to, they don't want to fight. They're fight. It's a case of there's just not enough fights around at the moment for it. So the likes of Siobhan, mm-hmm. who was twice this year in announced to have a, and her yeah, her, her yeah. message on social media absolutely broke my heart. Now it doesn't take yeah, much for this a big Egypt here to shed a tear or two. That lady has no I one think to. I was only a week before the fight yeah. was supposed to happen as well. Though. Absolutely oh. apologising to everybody and anybody, and nothing she could do about it. It broke my heart. Yeah. But what? And again, very... though, man, you know that that wasn't anyone's, you know, it wasn't no. anyone's fault. It was just the way the cookies. Unfortunately, man, it was her opponent's fault. Let's be honest about it. It can be very unlucky, man. You know, and it's just it just can be at the end of the day, it's the way the cookie crumbles, man. And boxing can really can be gut wrenching in that in that sense, like. But it's just. It happens, man. I've seen it happen yeah. in the turn pro, and I've seen it happen a lot of the time, you know. And it, you know, it's not it's no one's fault really. It's just, you know, it's just fucking. What can you do, like you know? Yeah, you gotta take the good, but you gotta take the good with the bad. That's for sure. But on a positive note, watch the space for Siobhan O'Leary. I'm, I'm going to make it my business to get in touch with her, uh, and mm. because I always love chatting with her, but I'm always respectful as well. Of it was a tough time. She needed a little bit of time to regenerate, get herself going yeah. again, and she, I she's. I'm in the gym with her a lot now, man. She's looking, she's looking good, man. I'm looking forward to her now. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, and, uh, and she's representing female be a, it'll boxing. Be a big, it'll be a big win for her, man. I can tell you that. She's on fire on the gym yeah. already, man. You know, she's... I put up, I put up a picture of a ball of cereal this time Instagram. Checks you back, you, you, you prick or something. Like that. <laughs> love me, you know? There's me eating big balls of cereal and boxes of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You, it, you have to winter well, Graham. You have to winter well. You know, it's all oh, about bulking. I'm, I'm, I'm in hibernation, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
fucking bears over in Ashford. Polar bear mode, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in serious hibernation mode now where I'm going to just eat and that. But, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually the fittest and the leanest I've ever been in, at Christmas since I was about 11, I'd say. Well, listen, if all else fails and when the gloves are hung up, I hear there's a budding career coming on the stage as well because there was pictures listen, of you man, broke. I could, I, I've been singing for years. <laughs> I didn't know that, yeah. I, I, my, my mother, my mother wrote me in every Christmas without fail, every Christmas. And my old flesh it was the other night, and I knew she wrote me in at some stage, like to sing a song with. So it has all to my be family good. sing, man. They're all really good. My sisters are brilliant singers. My mother's a great singer. My old flesh can sing, but my sisters are really good, you know. And I knew when I seen them all singing, I was like, ah, she's gonna wrote me in over a song. So I don't mind every now and again. No, I like, I like singing, man. You know what the best thing about it is when you can get up and hold the tune and have a laugh at the same time and not take it too yeah. serious. There's nothing annoys me more than someone gets up at a karaoke and they think they're Celine Dion but they sound like yeah, yeah, an yeah, alley yeah. cat. You know, like and, they're, in a bag. <laughs> and they're all they're like, serious. Get off the stage, you suck. And they're all so serious with the fo- with the face and staring into the imaginary cameras and they're not a note in their head. You know, so. Yeah. But it's all part of the spirit and the Christmas spirit, and it's an important time as well because let's face it, right? We can we're, we're, we're focusing on the highs and, and and the positive side of it. But um, Limerick's a fantastic city, and I say this over and over again, not just to you. I've said that there's two cities that I can see a lot of kinship between: is Belfast, Limerick. Tough, hard environments in the past have had their ups and downs, and it's it's everyday life as everybody does has a battle. It's been a tough twelve months for that city. It's been a really really tough. We've lost. Yeah, yeah. We've lost a, a future world champion, and I say that without fear of any contradiction in Kevin Shee, uh, who was a, a just preposterous talent, phenomenal talent, and I know you were close to his family. I don't want to drag it down too far. I know you knew him well. I knew you learned as much from him as a young fella as he did from you, but we could not say a word about the man this, this time of the year either, could we? Yeah, look, I mean, the whole city, you know, I think... There isn't a day goes by that something that we don't think of him, you know what I mean? And and it's just it was it's probably the biggest loss, you know, it was terrible, like, you know, and mm. whole life ahead of him and, and listen, world champion and then some like that kid was, was gonna do it all. I don't care what anyone says, mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? He had the mentality, he had the skill, he had the he had the heart, the top of the head, absolutely everything you needed to be to be whatever you wanted to be, man, you know. So it was it was just so sad and it's still so sad for, you know, but Fair play to his family and fair play to all the lads and you know and and you know fair play to everyone that got together for him and, and you know and his his name will always live on in Limerick man always I don't I don't you know his name will always live on in Limerick always you know yeah um, it speaks very highly Graham. Your, yeah it doesn't RT don't do much too often in when it comes to boxing and when you see them recognizing and acknowledging then you realize the 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 gravity, yeah. the gravity this man has held in you know and it's a uh, it's senseless it's wrong. And you could get caught up in all of that. But the point is, as you said rightly, the city is never, ever, the country is never going to forget his name. He seemed to touch people that, for some reason, I said to you at one point after doing the little video and everything else, I had a feeling and I never met the man in my life, you know. So it's, it speaks very, very highly of him and for his family and his little girl and everybody else now, he's, um he's the, he's the brightest guy, star in the sky, yeah. you know. And 100%, man. 100%. There's not much more we can say about it other than, dragging a two just to remember him and pay everybody this yeah, time of the year of it's, it's it's easy to get carried away with the fun I, I did about a post last night there's a table around every house in this Christmas or in a lot of houses where there's an I've empty seat I've seen that man yeah it was, it, was, it, was, it was very nice yeah, it's, um, it's important it's important and not to be a boss kill either you know but on a bigger picture Graham we've all had those highs and lows mental health yeah. is at this time of the year it's very easy for people to f- get Go carried away and forget yeah. we've all been there at that time of the year what if there's any little pointers, none of us have the exact answer. If we had, we'd be fucking farming course, it out. Yeah, yeah. What, any little tips for, for, for this time of the year when you feel people that mightn't be feeling it or might be feeling the pinch or from your own experience, what would you have used? Look, man, you know, you know the one thing, one thing I, you know, I, I, don't, you know, I try to say to people, like, it's not, to, not to put yourself under pressure for anybody, like, and especially this time of year. You see all these families trying to outdo each other on Facebook with pictures and presents and this and that and, you know, like... At the end of the day, the, all the kids want, man. I know my son, man, all he wants to do is spend time with his family. Like, he just, you know, and I know all kids, that's what kids want, man. They want to just be with their families and be happy. And that's, that's the most important thing we can give anybody, man, is to be happy this time of the year. Like, it's, yes, presents and all that is great. Like, but, you know, you see so many people going under pressure and, and stressed out. And that's where, that's where the mental, that's where the mental toughness comes in, man. And you're like, oh my God, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to pay for that? When at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, man. It's all materialistic stuff that has no meaning to anybody. You know, and and yes, like I said, it's it's great to be able to do things like that, and and um and and buy your kids presents, and fantastic for anyone that does it. But you know, some people aren't able to do that, and 
you know, what I say to anyone, man, is just just be there for each other. You know what I mean? Be 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 loving for each other. You know, be happy to each other. Be good to each other. You know what I mean? And and be strong for each other. Like you know, because like you said, man, this time of year is very tough. There is a lot of families missing. A lot of people this time of year, me included. You know, my wife included. A lot of lot of lot of sad times. You know what I mean? But I suppose the best thing we can do is you know stay together. You know help each other through hard times, you know, and, and be good to one another, man. That's what Christmas is really about, you know. And I've seen a lot of stuff lately, man, in Limerick and in Dublin, helping homeless people. It's just really, really good to see that, man. Mm. You know, it's really, really good to see that. There's a thing in Limerick here, uh, the Haven Hub are doing it. You know, and one of the rooms actually in the Haven Hub is named after my cousin Yasmin. And, and you know, they're, they're opening Christmas Day where they're going to be giving out food to um, to the homeless, you know, here. And I know Dublin's doing a similar thing. Like, that's, that's just fucking amazing. That's what it's about really to me, man. You know, it's about giving back to our communities, giving back and helping the people that really need the help, like, you know. Yeah. That's what Christmas is about. And it was for the people that, you know, that try not to stress themselves out, like, you know, who cares about presents yeah. and things like no, that? Because at the end of the day, it does not matter. It's not, it's, you know, it's materialistic things are not important. Like, they're not. Like, they're not no, one bit, they, don't, they don't matter. They don't, they have no meaning in your life. You know what I mean? What's important is being there for your family, being there for your friends. Being being there in general, like you know, not not being in the, not being stuck on your phone, not being mentally being somewhere else, you know, being wholeheartedly there with your with your family and your loved ones at this time of year. That's what it's about, really, man. I think. And that's a good point as well because there's a lot of the time you can be there in shell and you're not looking or listening oh, to anything. Of course, much. Man, of course. And and for me, from my point of view, what I find as well is it's it's for me it's a case, and I'm only saying this from my point of view. Whether it is for everyone else or not, it's not. It's I'm not saying that. But for me, what I try to do is I try to keep those highs just a little bit from getting too high and I find the lows try and control the control of it's trying to keep everything just a little bit of course when there's a bit of a crack in a session going on you're in the middle of the sing song the guitars are on everything else, absolutely go for it and have the fun but to try and not let the highs get too high and then let the lows get too low and try and keep a little bit as close to that centre as we can which is not always easy you know but look shout out to the Haven Hub as well in Limerick and, and all the, the similar projects around the country because it is a it's it's a tough time of the year for people. It's a tough time to be on the street any time, but to be on the street this time of the year when you're seeing such yeah, of course, when when yeah. we know there is such wealth and ready available money out there, it's it's hard yeah. for it's hard to see, you know. Well, um, what I will say, is, man, it seems to me like that people are getting together, you know, people are um, people are really helping, man. You know, like uh, I have noticed a lot, a lot lately, man. It's me and all people are really actually trying to help, you know. And it's great to see that, man. You know, the people are helping around, you know, and it's um. Yeah, it's really good to see you this time of year, man. You know, Graham. I'll wrap it up with that. I don't want to drag every, suck the joy out of everyone's Christmas, by the way. Done, but it's it is important. Look, I like to try and keep things a little bit balanced. I like to be as real as possible without getting yeah, into stuff course, that's man. not. That's it, it's hard not to notice it. It's hard and it's sad to see. But look, do what we can where we can. Sometimes even just a smile and a hello makes the world of a difference to somebody that's there down on their luck at that time because it could be any of us at any yeah, time exactly um, from a boxing standpoint the last 12 months there's been just so many like the last 6 weeks for me has been just a case of trying to catch your breath go again it's like one show after another after another um, are there any or what would be the standpoints for you the standout ones or the highlights of the year for me myself or as no I suppose well, or... well we've done your one so far we've gone through your fights yeah. and you're and we've yeah yeah We'll, we'll get back to look, I suppose, what your hopes are for the new year. We, we I think we're all fairly sure what that is going to be. But um, yeah. I suppose internationally, on boxing and the, the wider world. Internationally, what, man, you know, there's been some really good moments. Michael Conlon dedicating his fight and his shots to Kevin Sheedy was one of the was one of the greatest moments of the year for me, man, seeing that on television. That was absolutely amazing when Conlon done that, you know. Um, dedicated his shots to Kevin. Um, I think watching Michael Conlon this year um, rise up the rankings was really good for Irish boxing, man. And um, Really, really good. I really enjoyed that. You know, and, and there's been there's been some really good fights, man. Ruiz beat Joshua was probably the yeah. most exciting thing of the year, you know. Uh Katie Taylor. Wilder. Katie Wilder. Katie Taylor, man. Jeez, what a, like you know, what an amazing, amazing <laughs> actor. Like, is there anything like her like no. fucking amazing, like you know what I mean? That fight with that Delphine person, like was that was that was a cracking fight. You know, I I, I, hope, I hope to see that fight again in twenty twenty, you know. Um there's just, there's just been loads, man. I tell you what, you know what's really, what really got me, man, was Julio Cesar Chavez laughing again. Like, what the fuck oh, was that? Oh, like? man. Like, I love, I, I think his father was one of the greatest yeah. fighters of all time. Of all time, like. And I always give, I always give Chavez Jr. the benefit of the doubt. Like, nah, this time he'll show up. And he was looking so good, and then he just quit. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Yeah. 
Like you, you know, there's, there's things like that as a boxing fan. When I see, I'm like, oh man, that's really annoying. Like, you know, because yeah. I'm a boxing fan. Like, and I love, I love the sport. I love watching, watching, watching good fights, and it looks like it's going to be a good fight, and then he just quits. You know, so when you think of the talent bummer. that he does have, and you know he has it, because we've seen it in his early career. And whatever about the talent, he's one tough cookie. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. He definitely has his dad's genes, oh. and blood, and bones, and but the same kind of <clears throat> packing like that. But I suppose. As a boxing fan on the team, seeing all the Irish talent coming up has been absolutely amazing, man. Like Paddy, Donovan, Leary, Spawn, you know, my own people. And then, you know, like <clears throat> like Deshaun McComb and stuff like that. And, and, and many other fighters like, that I've been watching all year, like, that are just doing really, really well, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the next stage of that goal in contact as well with Tyrone McKenna and, and Tyrone, um, the other Tyrone from Belfast. Tyrone yeah. McCullough and Tyrone McKenna. Tyrone McCullough and McKenna. Looking <laughs> yeah. forward to watching them going forward, you know. In the in the goal and contract, so yeah, there's some good. You know, it's been a good year for for Irish boxing. Um, in in itself, you know, again, I mentioned Luke Keeler fighting for world title the start of next year. Walked out, beat Lewis Arias during the year. You know, what a knockout! You know, that was great too. times, man. You know, as well as that, then I suppose for me, I'm mean, looking at uh, for me. Is there one fight you would? What's your fight of the year? So internationally, would you say? Is there one that stands fight out for you? Year internationally. Um, Put you on the spot now. <laughs> Do you know what, man? Do you know what was was one of the most exciting fights of the year? Was Nonito Denier uh, versus Inyo from Japan. You know, and I brother. promise you we haven't set this up, but that's what I have written down here in front of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Incredible. That was, that was one of the most exciting fights I've seen. And Josh Taylor versus Progress. Yes. The two of them fights were absolutely cracking. Amazing fights. Yeah. You know, they were really good fights. But, but to, to me, if I had to pick one fight of the year, it would be... In you versus Denier. That was that was that was my my favorite fight. Yeah, I think you're right too. I'm a hundred percent. I had it written down here, and I had underneath it Conlon. You've ticked that box, Katie Taylor, and then Dubois the other night. The knockout was just sensational. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, he's a beast as well, Lee. Sensational, he is on the way up. And um, look, we do an awful lot of talk about our own, and rightly so, because we're the only ones really do it. Progre and yeah. Taylor. Taylor, we'll take. He's Celtic. He's Scottish. He's part of us. We'll, we'll take a little bit of that as well. I think he's one of the best lightweights in the world. Oh. I've said it for years. I've seen him. I think he's brilliant. And That's we've got him. some. We've got brilliant. a huge unification fight coming up now in the new year. And then looking forward. Is there anyone that stands out? And I'll let you go. And is there anyone that you're looking forward in particular, apart from your own? Obviously, you've got your own battles coming down the line as well. So. Um, anyone that I'm looking forward to seeing in the new year, like yeah, what fight would you say would be one to to to, to watch out for? That I suppose Fury Wilder two is going to be a cracker, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah, be... Fury Wilder two man is going to be a, is it going to be a cracker fight? Luke Healer and Dread is going to be a good fight. And you know what, man, I'm looking forward to seeing what Canelo's next move is, man. I really am a big mm. fan of Canelo, man. You know, so I'm looking forward to seeing is he going to fight Saunders? Is he going to fight? Is he going to fight Liam Smith? You know, are Smith and Saunders going to fight? So I'm looking forward to see what happens there, you know. Liam Williams had some win the other night. He might just be yeah, in the Yeah, you know what? Him and Jeff a... Horn, I only, say, I only commented on something right about saying him and Jeff Horn would be a great fight. Wouldn't it? Yeah. I'd, I'd like be... to see that fight. I'm talking to Nick, um, Nick Noonan uh, here. Shout out to Nick Noonan in Australia. He's due to has news for his coming, apparently huge news about Dennis Hogan and uh, Jeff Horn. And I just and of course, Dennis Hogan, man, against Mungia, man, that was probably the biggest robbery yeah, of the year, of yeah, the decade. Yeah, absolutely. And you we know, could be Dennis looking... Dennis Hogan, we... an absolute legend of the, of the game, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm a big fan of Dennis Hogan, man. And, and you know, he, he fought Charlo that two weeks ago, man. Way bigger guy and went out in the shield, done his best, you know what I mean, against a really, really... Really good middleweight. Yeah. You know? Do you know what it is, Graham? It's one of those. We need one of those fights to click for us to bring boxing to Ireland to set it on fire again and get the O2 rocking up in Dublin or the whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's the point it's depot. If if all things were equal and been done the way they should have been done, we should be looking at Spike and Dennis Hogan in the point depot in the new year, and that Mungia lad oh, should be. be Imagine the card underneath that. Jesus, the juices are flowing here. I'm getting myself excited. I'll fight anyone anyway. If anyone's <laughs> I'll fight anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone that can't see he's taking the vest off as he says it and he swings the dukes are up <laughs> any man anywhere anytime <laughs> Graham it's always absolutely enlightening it's always you, you light the place up when I'm talking to you it's a pleasure and, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart I wish you Lauren, I wish the little man to detrain himself, all the all the crew and everyone that's helped make the year what it is for yourself. I Thanks, wish you all the I best. Everything you've done for this year, but it really do means a lot. Ah, look, it's much. been the highlight. Of, it's been the highlight making real friends with real people. Boxing news over the last few days, and it's kind of coming to a crescendo now. The end of a an absolutely monstrous year, and certainly a monstrous quarter for the end of the year for fighting. 
Uh, the big, big headlines at the weekend for me was Daniel Dubois' absolute destruction of Fujimoto. Unbelievable knockout. The way he set it up, the way he delivered it, and the way he just carries himself in general. It's been a phenomenal fi- 2019 for him. He's had five fights, five stoppages. There, of course, are all... And of course there's all the wingers, the naysayers, the, you know, the opponents are this and the opponents are that, and blah, 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 blah. Zip it. 2020 will be another step up. He's, he's stopped all five opponents in 2019, some of them in devastating fashion. If you look at the knockout against Fujimoto on Saturday night, talk to me. Talk to me. Who's knocking people out like that? What prospects? Very, very few massive year for him and it's been a massive year for Frank Warren Queensbury Boxing and their fighters Cuevin Idiarco of course is with uh, Frank Warren they s- s- absolutely sing his praises every chance to get he is a preposterous talent a phenomenal talent a great young Irish fighter who has won Irish titles all the way through delighted 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 to see him do so well and it's just it's it's great it really is he's 6-0 and now as he moves into the new year and anyone that wants to hate on or doubt Frank Warren for, don't forget who this man has built don't forget he's built Joe Calzaghe don't forget he's worked with Frank Bruno he's worked with Lennox Lewis over the years he has built Prince Nazim he's built Chris Eubank he has just been a sensation sensation and you can have all the different narratives and rhetorics. You don't have to like him, but he knows the boxing business and he knows how to build fighters. And in Quivi Nagyako, he sees as one of his brightest shining lights for 2020. So get behind him, support him, and best of luck to Warren, best of luck to Hearns, best of luck to all the promoters that are going to help our fellas and girls get where they need to get. And it's been a big, big year for them. It's been a big year for our Irish talents, and it's, it's not ending anytime soon. Another one at the weekend was that absolute despicable disgrace of a quit from from Chavez. And like, I mean, I'm not talking about getting stopped if he was hurt or anything else. This guy came in. Like, this is one of the most overprivileged, self-serving, pompous. Uh, just, I, 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 I hate saying it about boxers because there's very few of them like him. But he came in five pound overweight. He refused to do drug testing. Pays a million pound just to get the fight that he wanted. Looks, the fight goes the way it was going. I didn't look at it. I'm not, I'm not going to say much about him because he's just, he is what he is. He's living on his father's name. And if you want to know, if you want to get a feel and, and a general reaction as to what he is and was and how he's been, look at his father's reaction the other night, who was widely respected as one of the toughest, hardest, and hardest working fighters in history. In history. Hugo Cesar Chavez Sr. Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Incredible warrior. Absolute warrior. And look at his reaction the other night at his son's. Um, just, nah, no mass. Not interested. Finished. Hand injury. No, let me see. Is it again? Uh, I, no, I, I couldn't breathe. Oh, I, I got headbutted. Um, you're just a bullshitter, son. You need to pack it up. You need to take a hike. And f- promoters need to just knock it on the head. Stop giving him daylight. Stop giving him the oxygen he needs because he's just not worthy of it. Uh, shout out to Daniel Jacobs got the win there again. No, not the most convincing, but look, it was one of the ones. It was served his purpose. I've, I I really felt sorry for Gabriel Zada who was fighting at another venue who was due to fight. He was the man ready to come in to take that uh, until Hearn. Anyway, I'm going to stay positive. But Gabriel Zada fought in front of an empty arena uh, because he didn't get the... He should have. He would have been a more worthy opponent for Danny Jacobs. Ma- not not massively much more, but he certainly would be uh, more worthy of it. And then just to wrap it up, I guess, you're looking at the heavyweight scene now. The greedy little piggies at the trough that is heavyweight boxing. The IBF and the WBO sanctioning bodies are, of course, calling mandatory defences on Joshua. They want their day in the sun. They want their paydays. They want to be feeding at the trough of the heavyweight title. And they've issued, the IBF have issued a mandatory defence for Pulev. And, of course, the WBO have issued a mandatory defence for, I believe, Usyk or Parker. So, uh, I Hearn, I believe, has been trying to negotiate and to kick it down the road a little bit more. Not going to happen, apparently. I understand that both have to be negotiated and organised. Whether that happens or not, I, to be honest with you, I'll be stunned if, if Anthony Joshua gets in the ring with Usyk. 
won't happen. I believe he will relinquish his WBO title and I believe he will defend the IBF against Pulev and that will be his probably his first fight in the new year. We'll probably look around April time or so. And just the last little bit of news, two pieces pertaining to Irish fighters. It looks now like Luke Keeler may not fight with Bubu Andrade in January. It looks now like Hearn has negotiated something somewhere else. I don't know for sure, but just some stuff I was reading earlier on. Could have been on Boxing Ireland, it could have been on Facebook. I'm not 100% sure, it could be one and the same. But I believe now that there may be a spanner in the works. Hopefully not for Luke Keeler. Hope he gets his day in the sun. We could be looking at, as I said, early in January. or in, Yeah, before the end of January, you could be looking at Luke Keeler and Spike O'Sullivan having fought Mungia in, in each in turn. Hopefully so. And the last thing, of course, I believe there was talk earlier on in the week of Katie Taylor uh, relinquishing her newly acquired title against uh, Linda True, but uh, no, apparently not. Apparently it's an IBO title that's been relinquished somewhere on the line. Or it's an IBO title that is now on the line for Linda True's next fight. So Katie has not, I believe, has not uh, relinquished any of her titles. She is still a double world champion and happy to hold on to them. So we'll keep an eye on it and we let you know www.enswellboxingpodcast.com Have a look at us on Facebook, Instagram and the email is enswellboxingpodcast at protonmail.com Get your thoughts, feelings and everything else across. Pretty much it for this episode. I'll be back over the next couple of days with an episode featuring former British, Commonwealth, European and World Champion Kilcullen, Bay, Kilcullen connected Billy Schwer brilliant brilliant chat and an insight into Billy's career which was unbelievable Haven't he, how many attempts I think he had three attempts at winning the world title before he eventually got his hands on the cover of the title itself a fantastic person, personality an up and at him sort of fella and was a really really brilliant conversation he had with Billy a couple of weeks ago there now so it's been a year hasn't it it's been a year yeah it's been ups downs highs lows good bad but Far more positive than anything else. Far more positive. It's been, um, in podcast terms, uh, definitely where I want to be now. Definitely where I want to be. Uh, did I believe this time last year? Mm, yeah, ish. Did I know? Well, I hoped. I hoped I could get a year under my belt. I hoped I could do what I needed to do. And I did it. Uh, now I know, without doubt, what I can do. I know, without doubt, the contacts, the connects the phenomenal people that are just so given and willing to help and trust me in the coming weeks and months ahead and years but that's little bites goals remember and uh, the one the people that you're going to hear from across all spectrums from the very best talent we've got coming off this island to the top of the pile internationally and uh, in terms of the podcast here and structure there's going to be more adding there's going to be more little sections there'll be the blog to come soon there'll be some videos video interviews there's also a new media venture which I'm just putting the finishing touches here right now Alcan Media it's called so that will give different opportunities then to maybe bring a couple of speaking tours and a couple of fighters across and who knows book signings and what uh, whatnot. but all that thing all those things are in the pipeline and all those things are only possible by people helping out. The best thing anyone can do for the podcast right now, over the coming days, would be to get across. I'll put the link in the show notes. Please, please, please. And you don't hear me say this too often. Please, if you're going to do anything or you can do anything to help, get across there to iTunes and, and leave a little review. Subscribe. Click the... It's 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 pretty easy to do. It's pretty easy to do. If you really... If you, if you could, it'd be brilliant. Because I haven't really launched any sort of... Uh, campaign to climb any sort of any tables or ratings or anything else and that's what's going to f- fuel the um, advertising and everything else so if you can I would really really ask that's all I can ask that is all I ask of you to do and ask yourself and your loved loved ones and your nearest and dearest personally speaking it's been a yeah it's been a journey again and I hate that using that word too often I hate using any word too often but certainly on a personal level it's been one of learning for me getting to know what I don't know that's not too hard and uh, trying to brush up on it a little bit trying to learn trying to find out what I need to do uh, not just in podcast terms but in in the bigger picture in the bigger picture and to look inwards before outwards less lots of little things lots of little things some of them have worked some of them haven't 
Some of them are a work in progress. People that I've met across the last 12 months just been absolutely off the scale. Phenomenal. And I'm looking at one here right now, right in front of me. Been my inspiration, my absolute inspiration from um, last May when I almost derailed. And uh, yeah, that is a story in itself. It will be told someday. It will be told. I promise you that. I promise you that. It's one that I've skirted around quite a bit. And uh, when it's ready to be told, that story will be told. And um, it's a very special one. And to everybody, everybody, and I mean this from the pit of my being, and uh, without getting a whole lot of <laughs> any, uh, emotion or anything else, it's a special time for everybody. So make it special. And if you can't be with the one you love, love the ones that you're with. And I know that sounds like another Hallmark cliche, but do it. Do it. And it might seem at times a little bit whatever else. If it does, if it's unbridled joy, absolutely go for it. Go for it. Make those memories because that's what it's all about. And I guarantee you 2020, it's going to be a year. It's going to be my year. It's going to be your year. It's going to be our year. And it's going to be one hell of a banging year in terms of everything you want it to be. Just do it. Get after it. That's about it for me and them until then. www.endswellboxingpodcast.com Check us out all the way across the anti-social medias. All the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, we got it. And remember, over the next couple of days, a big, big happy Christmas. A super, super happy Christmas. Hope it's everything you want it to be. And if you can't be nice, be quiet. Be quiet.